Hi, this is David. Today I'm talking about ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a uh, chat program built on artificial intelligence. It's actually built on top of a large natural language model. And what that means is that it's capable of understanding input in a natural language like English, like I'm speaking now. And it's also capable of returning information in a natural language like English. English. So it has, it understands things like colloquialisms and idioms and slangs and just the way that people talk. It's pretty good at it. And it, it can be used to uh, almost emulate a human. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. Um, and it sorts English, Spanish, French, German, Chinese, and others. I've only tested it in English, so I'm going to do all these demos in English. Um, and uh, it's also smart enough to remember throughout a conversation questions you've asked before. So you can ask follow-up questions, which is really nice. Today, I'm going to show you how to access it through the web page, but maybe in a future demo, I'll show you how to use the API. There's an API for this. Um, and it is also smart enough to learn over time. So it has a lot of human qualities to it. it as I said, it's not perfect. Um, it was trained on data from the internet, and the internet is not perfect, so there may be biases in there. There may be false information in there, but it is possible to correct it and make it a little smarter through input if you see, notice something obviously wrong with it. Uh, and it's possible that it doesn't quite understand the context of a question. Sometimes there's ambig ambiguity in the way that you ask a question. Um, it's uh, It doesn't have information infinite knowledge the version right now gpt version 3 was trained on data through 2021 so anything after that it probably doesn't know about but it is pretty smart it can do a lot of things here um and then also it the current version version 3 only works with text i think future versions will have some other capabilities of understanding images but that's not true with the current version and version 3 is actually free you can sign up and use it. It is possible to pay, I think it's $20 a month right now. And with that, you'll get the newer version of ChatGPT, which is now version four. You'll get higher priority so that if there's lots and lots of users, it's less likely to be down, it's less likely to be slow because you'll have top priority, things like that. All right, let me get started with this demo here. So the way you get started is go to this URL right here, chat.openai.com. And right here, and I'm not logged in right now. And if I didn't have an account, the first thing I want to do is to sign up right here. And I can do that, uh, but I do have an account. So I can just click this login button or I could go to this login button here. They're the same thing. It takes me to this login page. I enter the email that I registered with, enter my password. Ow, I'm done. I'm in. And it has this very simple interface. There's just one box right here, like a lot of search engines do, and a few examples of how you can do it. Over here is where you would upgrade if you wanted to start paying for it and getting those extra features I mentioned. Let's begin using ChatGPT. Uh, first thing I want to do is just try it for things at work. I, I'm a software developer, and a lot of times I'm asked to write some code in some language and I don't always understand. I don't always know the language that I need to write it in. So this is a good starting point for me. I'm going to type something in here. Let me do this. Paste in this. How do I delete a row in MongoDB using PHP? Well, I'm a C sharp developer. I typically use SQL Server. Uh, this is something that maybe I don't know how to do and I'll run that. I sped up these videos so they they come out a lot faster just to make this a little bit more interesting. But it took a while to, to type this out, not a whole long time, maybe uh, just a few seconds. But uh, you can see that it did provide some code here in PHP, how you connect to a MongoDB database, um, the name of the database here. You put your own in there, and the data the concept has a concept of Mongo has a concept of collections, which are kind of like tables in a relational database. And then you could select the it by its row ID. And here, right here, is the command to actually delete that one row. And this is actually pretty good. There's even a copy code right here that I can do this and paste it into my IDE. There's an introductory sentence up here. What it's going to show you, and then what's really interesting is down here, there's actually some text explaining how the code above works. And so, so not only do you get the code, but you get an exp explanation of it. Now, this is pretty simple code, and this I've tested this. I think this works. I tested when I ran earlier, um, but it's possible that it's wrong. 
However, even if it's a wrong, it's a good starting point. If I know nothing about PHP or nothing about Mongo, then what can I do? I can read the manuals. I can uh, go to a search engine and find samples online. I can buy books and read those. Or I can use this as a starting point and then just correct any problems that it had. So this is a really powerful tool, even if there might be a few mistakes. And there will be, from time to time, mistakes that it comes up with. Uh, let's try another one here. Uh, let's say I wanted to create some sample data from my application. I could come in here and type in generate sample baseball statistics as CSB, via, uh, comma separated values. Let's try that one. And here what it did is it gave us some code that will actually output a CSV file. And maybe that's what I want. It does give an example here, but maybe I just wanted the data itself. And when I ran this earlier, it actually gave me a different response. Let me hit regenerate response here and see if it gives me something different. It didn't give me something significantly different than before. Um, when I ran this yesterday, what it did is actually output the data as a CSV file. So I, I, I like that response as well. It gave me the code and it gave me the output. And I, then I could just copy and paste it into a text file and use that as sample data. In this case, I'd have to actually open this up and run it in PHP. So maybe I could more specifically uh, the lesson here is that the more specific you are in your questions, the more likely you are to get the answer that you expect. All right, let's try something else. Um, maybe not a pro, maybe not a programmer, but maybe I want to write an article or I want to understand something better. How about if I say write a blog post on the dangers of artificial intelligence? Now here's written an entire article about artificial intelligence. It's based on other articles that are out on the internet and um, it's paraphrased a lot of those things. There's an ethical issue here. If I were to copy and paste this into my own blog, then I, I think that would be unethical. I would, I would be claiming something as my own. And even if I agree with that, of course the other issue is that there may be incorrect statements in here. I haven't read through this to find out how right it is. It might be a decent starting point or give me some ideas, but I wouldn't want to use this uh, as uh, as if it were my own content. However, maybe I want to do something similar. Instead of saying write a blog post, maybe I want to say write an outline of a presentation on the dangers of artificial intelligence. I could use this. This feels more ethical. Using this as a starting point, I probably wouldn't use it exactly right, but um, I, I, it feels, it seems to me that this would be okay to use and to expand into a full presentation and claim that as my own. This does not. Now you'll have to make these decisions. Your uh, people will wrestle with this, and you'll have to think about that. But you know, you can't just use it to do your homework. That's uh, I shouldn't say you can't. You may not use it to do your homework. That would be unethical, clearly. Um, so you'll have to make some decisions about how much of this is actually your own thing. And we have so similar things. If we go out into a search engine and we find things online, we don't copy them verbatim and claim that as our own. We may use those as input and combine multiple articles together and bits of information. That'll be a good starting point for what we're going to write or produce. And, and that original output that we've, it's based on our search as results, we could claim as our own. So I think a similar mindset works with ChatGPT as if it works using Bing or Google or whatever search engine. Um, it, speaking of writing, how about if I wanted to um, take, let's say I wanted to take uh, uh, an email. How about this? Write an email to my boss with a plausible excuse why I am late on my project. 
Now, this is a, a, a private email. It's only going to one person. I don't know if there's any copyright issues. Of course, the ethical issue here is this may or may not be true. It says something about I was in the hospital with a family member. You probably don't want to be lying to your boss. But if I, could, if I was more explicit about what the reason was for being late, maybe you could come up with something that uh, that is more appropriate for my situation. And that, again, feels like it, it feels more ethical because I'm just sending it to one person. As long as it's true that I'm sending it to one person, then, then plagiarism doesn't seem to be a, uh, a factor in that. Again, you have to make that decision yourself for these things. But it does, in terms of this writing style, this looks pretty professional. And the tone of it sounds like something that an employee would send to a boss. And that's really helpful. Some people struggle with that. You know, we're not born knowing how to write things. Let's do a couple other things here that are that are work related. My title is Cloud Solution Architect. I work for Microsoft. And let's say I was going to hire someone else in my role and I wanted a job description. And here's a nice professional sounding job description. Uh, again, I probably wouldn't copy it verbatim because this doesn't know anything about my particular company, but it's a good starting point. I could probably use part of this when placing an ad somewhere to recruit a cloud solution architect. Just to want to proofread it and make sure that it's accurate, which is unlikely given that all we've given is a title. All right, let's close off with uh, an educational thing. Let's say I wanted to understand something, some concept. Of course, I go out and read a bunch of articles on that, but ChatGPT has already done that and it can summarize for me. So I tell it to just explain auto scaling to me, this concept. That's pretty good. It's this technique used in cloud computing to dynamically adjust the computing resources allocated to an application. Here, I'm not trying to republish it anywhere else. I just want to understand it without spending a whole lot of time doing it. Like if maybe I'm in a meeting and somebody throws out a term that uh, that I've never heard this term before. I want to, before I respond, I want to at least understand what they're talking about. Just a few paragraphs, I can understand that. If maybe a few paragraphs is too much to read because it's fast conversation, I'm about explain auto scaling in one sentence. And there we go. Auto scaling is a technique used in cloud computing to dynamically adjust computing resources allocated to an application based on its current demand. If that's too complex for me, how about explain auto sentence auto scaling like I am five years old. And this is pretty nice. It simplified it. It, it, it targeted at a different audience and explained it in, uh, using metaphors that a five year old could understand. Um, and this is this is really nice. And if you want to have a little bit of fun, you could say something like explain auto scaling uh, like a pirate or like froghorn leghorn or something like that. So these are just a few examples of how you can use ChatGPT, the free version, to make yourself more efficient at work. And I hope this sparks your imagination and you can then think about other ways that you can use ChatGPT. Feel free to put them in the comments. And this is David. Thank you for watching.